let's get clear about another particular aspect that we often endure ongoing and unnecessary guilt and shame about. I know I really struggled with this in the early stages of trying to reclaim my life and sanity from both a dysfunctional family and a cult. And looking back, it really siphoned my energy for too long. So I hope this very frank discussion can help you end any unnecessary suffering so you don't have to endure this psychological torture for as long as I did. Guilt, shame and fear are the most powerful emotions used to manipulate human behavior. And when we're trying to break free from dysfunctional dynamics, we often don't realize how easily we are still triggered by the use of guilt, shame, and fear. If we're not aware of this, we automatically feel bad. We replay guilt-tripping scenarios in our own mind with an extremely harsh and judgmental tone. And if we don't examine these dialogues that we rerun in our mind, we will continue to be easily triggered by other people's comments. People who aren't aware about the nature of dysfunctional families, people who obviously come from functional families, often do more harm than good by saying things like, you shouldn't abandon your family, but it's your mother or father and they love you. And at this point, it becomes really obvious that we may have a completely different association with what love actually means. If they don't say it as directly as that, you may have also experienced the more indirect communication where they browbeat you and imply that you're a terrible person because you abandoned your family. So let me get really clear about the word that's been used here, and that is abandon. People do not abandon their family. They're forced to leave. They have probably done everything they possibly can to not have to make this decision. It's not even about whether you like these people, because even that's hard, based on how they've repeatedly treated you. It's about saying no to abuse. You're protecting yourself from being harmed, and the cost has become too great. And if your family doesn't see that, or care about that, then what sort of a family is that? A very dysfunctional one, where abuse is normalized, and it's enabled to continue. Like I discussed in my previous video, 12 disturbing signs of a dysfunctional family. People who make these comments obviously don't know about your particular situation. They don't know the context. They're simply making an assumption, a generalization. They're probably completely oblivious to the abuse that does occur in some families where every boundary is repeatedly violated, where family members endure psychological, emotional, and sometimes physical and sexual abuse by one or more family members. People who have made the choice to go no contact with their dysfunctional family have often felt tormented by their own family, which of course only happens behind closed doors. So unless this person has experienced something like this personally, They'll think that you're crazy because the things that we endure behind closed doors are the type of things that occur only in movies. These type of shaming and guilt tripping comments aren't helpful at all. These people are basically shaming the victim for being victimized. Not that I'm saying for anybody to remain a victim, but the reality of what happened to you needs to be acknowledged, even if only by you. And by you no longer wanting to be in contact, you are acknowledging that what happened to you was not okay and you won't allow it to continue. If you feel bad after a comment like that, it indicates that you may have undifferentiated guilt. And I made a video about that as well, which I'll share in the description box below. Undifferentiated guilt simply means that you haven't clarified for yourself whether you are guilty of something bad or not. In dysfunctional families, What's projected, usually onto the more highly sensitive and more empathetic person, are the shadow aspect, which is all the guilt and shame that the family doesn't want to acknowledge. So when we are in a weakened, suggestible state, like in childhood, 
and particularly below the age of seven, we actually start believing that we should be ashamed all the time and we start believing that we are guilty for everything that's gone wrong. It almost feels like a spell has been cast on us. So people who make these comments that may trigger feelings of guilt and shame within us could actually be helping us to uncover whether we've truly let go of this belief. It is difficult for us to accept that this was not our fault, that we are not to blame. We were innocent children, enmeshed in a controlling and oppressive system that we couldn't possibly have known about back then. However, now as adults, we are responsible for taking care of ourselves, which includes limiting our exposure or removing ourselves completely from environments that are detrimental to our well-being. It's interesting to observe how someone would receive less judgment if they chose to walk away from a toxic workplace where their boss was a psychopath. But strangely, somehow you're not supposed to do that if your parent is a tyrannical narcopath, which has caused you to spend years in therapy maintaining your mental health, trying to cling on to some sort of connection that you have with your dysfunctional family. We've already endured enough emotional manipulation, or to put it more bluntly, we've been the emotional punching bags for too long, and we have scars on the inside that we're trying to heal from. We don't need strangers offering their well-meaning advice, which can often trigger these intense feelings of guilt and make us question ourselves. And this is why I'm clarifying this point, to set you free from the possibility of that so you don't waste time trying to defend or justify your decision. Please remember that some people will never understand or support your decision and they don't have to. Do not waste your time and energy on this futile endeavor. If you're looking for validation in the wrong places, you're basically saying you hold the key to my life. I can't move on till I get your blessing. This is ridiculous and it's evidence of how conditioned you've been to chronically seek approval. So it's an opportunity to go inward and reassess whether you're still harboring some false and limiting beliefs about yourself. And if we don't do this internal work, then we'll just avoid people and feel vulnerable to whatever is being said. Invalidation can be re-traumatizing if you're not aware. So just notice whether people making comments like this evoke any uncomfortable feelings and make you feel bad. The truth is that nobody can make you feel anything, but you may not yet be at that stage where you feel strong enough to trust your own decisions. It takes time to build self-resilience. And in the initial stages of when you're trying to stand on your own two feet, you can be triggered and set back by invalidating comments like that. That may or may not have been said with the intention to guilt trip you. What people don't understand is that going no contact is a serious decision. You are not abandoning your family. It's a decision that should never be taken lightly. Most people are forced to go no contact for a very good reason or numerous reasons. We have no choice but to sever ties with people who destroy our sanity and self-worth. Being forced to sever ties with your family puts you at a disadvantage because you're choosing to disconnect from support that you need. Everybody needs support whilst going through life's ups and downs. So it's a heartbreaking decision. But what's interesting is that oftentimes people who have chosen to abandon their dysfunctional family, much to their surprise, their life, health and relationships improves significantly. Like a divorce, there are many implications. So we don't abandon our families. We are forced to leave so we can survive and finally live life on our terms. It is not some phase that you're going through to reach your independence. And it is not an act of rebelliousness or because supposedly you've permanently been in a bad mood. No, this decision has probably taken you years to make. And it's almost humorous and really naive of anyone who listens to members of the dysfunctional family who state these are the reasons you abandoned them. Which yet again indicates how dysfunctional it is because they never admit fault. And you can never speak out against the family. No contact 
is a courageous act of self-preservation. It's an act of self-love. It's you defining your boundaries. It's not meant to punish anyone and you are not being cruel. It's the only way that you can heal. You're simply refusing to participate in an abusive dynamic. You finally had the most liberating realization that it is not your place to fix these people, to save them. You've accepted that it is what it is. You were in pain because you wished they would change and they were suffering because you no longer wanted to play your allocated role. So I hope this clarification gives you some peace of mind that you deserve to finally have. Please remember that you are an adult, which means you don't have to react like you would as a child. If you get reactive to this line of questioning or accusation, it just means that you're triggered to behave exactly how your dysfunctional family expects you. You are expected to defend your choices, to justify your reasons, to explain your preferences. No, you don't have to do this anymore. Stop yourself from repeating this deeply ingrained people-pleasing pattern. Your decision is your decision. They can have an opinion, sure, but you need to stand firm by what you believe is right for you. No contact gives you the opportunity to redirect your focus on yourself, process your emotions, question your beliefs and form new ones that support you. It is finally a time that is no longer about them, what they did. It's about you and creating the new you or rather peeling back the layers of a true you that was always there.